last six days. And it was a useful and informative session which we had arranged. And uh, the last day, we'll be concluding with the valedictory address, which will be started shortly. And then we'll be having the feedback session. I'd like the participants to give your feedback about our FTP program. And then we'll end with the feedback link. So our certificates will be dispatched in about a one week's time. So please give us a one week to 10 days time. So the certificates will be dispatched to your email IDs in which you have registered. So this program is being live streamed in YouTube also. So do subscribe our YouTube channel, VUCC Watch, for, to keep yourself updated on further developments on uh, programs which we will be conducting in course of this year. So I'd like to repeat that your certificates will be dispatched in one week to 10 days time in your registered email IDs. So please bear with us. So uh, you'll be getting it in one week to 10 days time, your certificates. For those who have attended all the sessions. Let us come. So, shall we start, sir? Ah, uh, yes, fine, ma'am. Eventually. Okay. To all the participants of the validity function for the one day for the one day faculty development program on recent trends in entomology. Prayer is an invocation of the heart. Time spent in prayer refreshes, renews, and strengthens one's life. Let's invoke God's blessings through a silent prayer. A warm welcome is the first sign of hospitality. Words of welcome fill an occasion with warmth and makes one feel that he is meant to be there. I now request our beloved head of the department, Dr. D. Radhika, PG and Research Department of Zoology, the Oshitamran College, to the welcome address and to introduce today's chief guest. Uh, a very good morning once again to all of you, to all the participants, and a warm, very warm welcome to you, sir, our uh, chief guest for this valedictory function, and uh, uh, welcome to all the professors from various colleges as well as research scholars who are attending our seminar for the past six days. Uh, so welcome you all. So I'm very happy and honored to have with us a very eminent personality in entomology. So he has uh, accepted uh, very gracefully, has accepted our invitation, even though we contacted him only two days back. And so thank you so much for that, sir. And uh, 
uh, for a brief introduction of our chief guest. Uh, he is Mr. M. R. Srinivasan, Professor in the Department of uh, uh, Agricultural Entomology from Tamil Nadu Agricultural University from Guaymajo. Uh, he has completed his PhD in Agricultural Entomology at uh, the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi. So in 1994, uh, he has been involved in entomolo entomological research for the past 27 years. So he has a very vast and wide experience in this uh, area of research. He has both UG and PG teaching experience, and he has uh, uh, taught courses uh, like uh, beekeeping, storage entomology, pests of the crops, and fundamentals and applied entomology. So these are the uh, topics which he had concentrated as a professor, and uh, he has uh, <clears throat> held positions, various positions. He has been the professor and head at the Department of Entomology at Kiligulam, and also he has uh, uh, been the associate professor at uh, Kiligulam as well as at TNAU Kaibato. And at present, he is the professor of the uh, entomological department, agricultural entomology at Kaibato. And um, he has various uh, projects for well, within the past six years only, he has given his biodata. That itself, he has the amount has crossed several crores, several crores of. Uh, rupees he has got from the various funding agencies from New Delhi, from Tamil Nadu State Council, ICAR, and it goes on. So, uh, such a vast research experience, and uh, he has published about uh, 52 research articles, and there are six books and uh, seven books cha book chapters to his credit. And uh, above all, he has trained about 5,000 farmers. So, that is quite a big number 5,000 farmers and uh, beekeepers on beekeeping. And uh, he has also guided the students for his for their PhDs and master degree programs. And uh, he has created a separate website for the benefit of the students and the farmers. So whatever research you do should reach the society. That is what uh, very important and that he has done uh, very meticulously. And he has created a website where you can refer uh, for beekeeping on uh, by the students as well as for the benefit of the farmers. And uh, <clears throat> with all this uh, great uh, um, experience and a vast knowledge. He has come over here to share his uh, expertise on this, especially beekeeping. Welcome you, sir, to the program and over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, you ma'am, for your affectionate words of welcome. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, so I am very much honored to be here uh, amongst uh, the scientists from across the country who have uh, joined to attend this uh, uh, program of uh, faculty development uh, program being conducted by uh, the Pivo Chidambaram College, uh, uh, Tutukudi, which has been accredited uh, by NAC as well as uh, with A grade and also has the 54th position uh, in the NIR of ranking. Uh, so that is very uh, means uh, significant. And also uh, the interest that is shown by the head of the department, uh, Dr. Radhika ma'am, and also Dr. Geeta ma'am, uh, who contacted me uh, two days back to make this program. And uh, so even though it was a short notice, I, I was uh, really means, uh, happy to uh, join uh, you because uh, we have been uh, associated with uh, agriculture universities and also ICR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, and. Uh, uh, sharing our uh, knowledge expertise with them and also getting their expertise uh, for our uh, benefit. So this one is slightly different wherein uh, the zoologists across the country are joining uh, uh, in, in two ways, like uh, individually getting benefited and also sharing the knowledge. So in, the, in this way, I thought uh, this will be a good platform uh, for me to discuss uh, the beekeeping, uh, particularly apiculture among you. Uh, so I saw the very interesting um, presentations made in the last six days by various uh, scientists, uh, uh, like on 28th, one Dr. Bala Subramanian from Madurai has joined and uh, given a good lecture uh, on diversity conservation, like, like that, uh, the, the, the list is going. And uh, uh, the last six days, you have got very good uh, uh, information from various people. So uh, the being the seventh day, I think uh, uh, two uh, things I can uh, means uh, understand. One is that you must be very much uh, means uh, what to say, uh, gained a lot of knowledge on, on the one aspect. And uh, you will be now thoroughly means uh, uh, interested to develop uh, yourself. And secondly, 
today being a sunday maybe you will be slightly uh, means uh, having your own personal works and other things in spite of that you have joined and uh, uh, made this program i am very happy about it uh, so uh, madam gave an introduction about me uh, so i have uh, some attachment with thootukudi district particularly i can say Uh, where uh, the college uh, is situated uh, i studied my undergraduation in kelikulam which is located in thootukudi district of tamil nadu uh, four years 84 to 88 uh, and uh, so i have a lot of attachment with that uh, district uh, as well as tirunelveli and similarly recently i was there as head of the department and also so warden of the students hostels and uh, so lot of student activities were there so in both ways i am very happy uh, to have associated with this thootukudi district now that uh, they are conducting a national level program and uh, also invited me that gives me a lot of uh, happiness uh, with that introduction uh, so i would like to go into the subject moreover uh, this program is coming to an end and uh, ma ma'am said uh, i can give this technical uh, talk as a part of the valedictory program also that that is also very um, it's a thing that gives me a lot of uh, happiness so i appreciate all the uh, organizing committee members uh, whose name i am seeing in the list yesterday madam shared the uh, brochure or the flyer of the program that is really very i mean it's uh, interesting i i could see that the institute uh, started in 1951 and has got, got both undergraduate postgraduate and mphil degree programs being offered there and uh, so in all ways uh, the college is very impressive and uh, giving good uh, training to students as well as the teachers so in that way i appreciate the entire uh, institute and uh, the college and uh, the administration and the uh, entomology I means uh, zoology department so entomology uh, i am uh, entomologist and uh, entomology is a part of zoology so it's only a small subject uh, in zoology but uh, your subject is vast and then you study a lot so i would like to touch even within entomology one particular aspect that is apiculture that you all are uh, aware uh, that apiculture is nothing but beekeeping and uh, the uh, conservation of various uh, um uh, uh bees not only the honey bees but also the uh, solitary bees and other native bees that are present uh, uh, in the country so uh, so the, the subject deals with that so i will uh, now the time is uh, 11:15 uh, i will take up to 11:45 is that okay fine ma'am ah uh, yes sir yes sir you can take it yeah so i would like to share the screen now uh, yes mm, share yeah just present um yes it's visible sir right okay fine uh so uh, the uh, yeah so uh, so the topic uh, i have short and uh, also i discussed with uh, uh, madam uh, and uh, the topic that i have chosen is bee keeping for enhancing crop productivity rural livelihood and nutritional security uh, so uh, this topic why i have chosen is that one is that i am uh, means uh, experienced in this field secondly uh, this is a very uh, important field uh, in the entomology uh, that is uh, honey bees being the beneficial insect all other many other insects are there which are harmful to us honey bee is one of the insect that is very most, uh, very much beneficial uh, like uh, we know so many uh, pests of human beings pests of crops we know so uh, so there are a lot of things uh, information about that to study however uh, in the ecology if you see pollination is a very important area uh, you must have studied the insect ecology animal ecology and other things so pollination has been one area which has uh, uh, caused the diversity of plants uh, in 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 the nature so in addition to the herbivory predation parasitism and other type of relationships uh, that the uh, organisms are having pollination is something uh, the that is very very uh, it's a ecosystem service they say uh, that is uh, the insects uh, or particularly the bees they are involved uh, in transferring the pollen from one plant to the other and in this way they are helping in uh, many ways one is that the yield is uh, increased crop yield is increased if you see from agriculture point of view but if you see from uh, the uh, general ecology point of view this pollination only has increased the diversity of plants in the world uh, 
so because of these pollinating insects there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of plants and also insects that are living in this world there is a mutual relationship it's a win win situation pollination is a win win situation i can say it's a mutualism where both the insect that is pollinating is benefited and also the crop that is pollinated is benefited in both ways so that is why i chose this topic uh, where uh, the crop is benefited and the insect is also benefited and another point of view if you see beekeeping uh, it increases the rural livelihood rural livelihood means people who are living in the villages their income is increased because of beekeeping one is it is increasing the uh, the honey uh, production and uh, this way they can sell the honey and their livelihood is improved secondly it increases the crop yield it increases the crop yield in the crops that are present so in this way nutritional security is also improved so in these all these three ways the beekeeping has been very useful and uh, but for the stinging of the honey bees because we are all worried about the stinging of the honey bees so that is why if some you ask someone whether be honey bee is a beneficial or a harmful insect someone may say it is harmful just uh, thinking means uh, keeping the uh, honey bee sting in mind but uh, if you see in all other ways honey bees are very useful and stinging also is problem only in the rock bee or the apis dorsata uh, which is a, a serious honey bee uh, and but that is also very 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 helpful in uh, increasing the crop yield as a pollinator so in, in if you see from any point of view honey bee is a helpful insect so let me talk about this insect today uh, so there are different types of insects that are present um, uh, means uh, but uh, bees uh, that are uh, found in the world among them uh, the, the the major bee species of the world the apis dorsata which consists uh, uh, the nests in open and also single combs in open you can see in the picture wherein you are able to see the big uh, comb and uh, the 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 biggest honey bee is this one the Ape, apis dorsata so th this has this is a wild honey bee which cannot be domesticated and i will tell you more about this in the coming slides and then apis floria it is also uh, not domesticated but it is not very uh, means you can say very ferocious or anything so the uh, only the dorsata is very ferocious and it can chase the people and uh, sting them and many people have died because of these things because if more than for 30 or 40 insects uh, sting it may lead to poison uh, uh, means the nerve poison entering into your bloodstream and affecting various organs uh, and uh, immediately if you uh, uh, means uh, attend a doctor if you are attended by a doctor you, you can be uh, safe otherwise uh, it, it can lead to death so that is the only problem with the, the dorsata but but for that all other insects are not very ferocious and uh, the first two are non domesticated then and that is apis floria is called a little bee and that also constructs single comb in open similarly dorsata also constructs single comb in open whereas apis mellifera and, and apis serana um, apis mellifera is called italian honey bee or the european honey bee that also constructs multiple combs in darkness and similarly, the Apis serana, that is also uh, constructing multiple combs in nest uh, cavities, that is called cavity nesting bee, whereas the uh, rock bee and the little bee, they are called as open nesting bees. So the mellifera and serana, you can rear in the boxes, honey bee boxes, and uh, that is why I have shown the beehive box in the middle. And the last one, meliponine, stingless bees, there are a lot of stingless bees in the world, uh, in different different types of the uh, stingless bees. And uh, I have shown the nest of this stingless bee in the middle, it is just a clustered nest, not like the uh, the hexagonal cells you can that you see in the Apis uh, gen, uh, genus. Uh, if you see the distribution of this uh, insect in the various parts of the world, uh, on, only in uh, Asia you are able to see Apis serana, Apis dorsata and Apis floria. You can't see these three insects in Australia or in Europe or in America or in Africa. So, so you can just understand that how uh, uh, our country is blessed uh, with so many different honeybees which are increasing the crop yield. Because of the crop yield they are increasing, India has been so rich and so flourishing that so many different different uh, people invaded India. Uh, so the reason for the richness of India and uh, the fertile conditions and also the, and the, uh, the good conditions in India 
that prevailed that made people to invade india i can say and uh, so we are blessed in that way uh, and uh, uh, let let me come to the uh, so so if you see this map you can see that ap sarana uh, is uh, uh, means found up to uh, japan china and other places whereas the rock b and also the little b ap dorseta and ap floria are limited to india Uh, then Pakistan, then Sri Lanka, and some Southeast Asian nations. But for these regions and other regions, you don't see these uh, insects. So we can be very happy one one side. On the other side, we have to save these and conserve these insects. Then only our crop yield will be at a high level. So now, now coming to the Dorseta, uh, which is wild and not amenable for domestication, highly ferocious, single comb, then nesting in open, migratory, found in rocks and dam sites and tall buildings, and a good honey yield. So in in any point of view, if you see this is a good uh, insect, uh, the the rock bee is a, a good insect. The, the wings are smoky, and uh, the insect is uh, the largest among the honey bees that we find in uh, India and the world. Uh, and there are some insects, uh, the uh, uh, variations in Dorseta. In the Himalayan regions, you see Apis laboriosa. That's a separate species, and some people put it as a, a subspecies under Dorseta. Whatever it is, uh, that's a very uh, still larger than the Apis dorsata in the Himalayan region. You can see that. Uh, and then coming to the uh, next slide, here you see the rock bees uh, constructing combs in the trees. So this type of trees you can see in the dam sites and also near the canals uh, where more water can be. So honey bees need more uh, uh, means water, not only just for drinking. But if only if any uh, water water is there in the soil, that goes into the trees, and finally when the flower is coming, there will be nectar in the flowers. If there is no sufficient water supply in the ground, uh, then you don't see nectar in the flowers. You may see flowers, but you may not see the nectar in the flowers. So because of this reason, the uh, honey bees uh, are more uh, found more in the uh, uh, what to say. Dam sites and also uh, uh, in the water bodies, wherever water bodies are there, you can see a lot of honey bees. So you can see this uh, rock bee taking uh, the nectar from the flowers. Uh, what are the flowers? That is the coconut flower. The, on the right side, you can see, and on the hind leg of the uh, uh, dorsata, you are able to see the pollen collected by the honey bee. So the nectar and pollen are the Food for the honey bees. Nectar and pollen for are the food. Nectar it collects with its mouth parts, and pollen that is sticking to the body is collected by the legs, and then in the hind leg it is carried, and then it is taken to the hive. So you can see that, and then the little bee, the Apis floria, it is the smallest among the uh, Apis uh, insects. That is uh, insects coming into the Apis genus. Uh, it is called a little bee. It is also not domesticated because it migrates uh, very often from one place to another place. Uh, and also it cannot be put inside the box it has it wants to live in open so maybe you can create some structure wherein it will be very conducive for the little bee to live but it will not live for long with you maybe for four or five months you can have the little bee in your garden after that it will fly away that is the nature of the bee uh, and uh, it's a very poor honey yielder but uh, we need not bother about the honey that we get from the uh, honey bee but you can uh, rare it for the pollination benefit so the main difference between the rock bee and the little bee is that the little bee constructs a comb that is only palm sized your hand size very small whereas rock bee constructs very big comb and another second difference is that you see in this little bee they are encircling the uh, twig or the uh, or the stick around which it is constructing the comb on the top of it you see the honey and in the bottom you are seeing the brood in the, in the in the in the bottom side you are seeing the brood and on the top you are seeing the honey whereas if you see the rock bee they just stick the uh, comb to the uh, tree it does not encircle the uh, tree trunk whereas here you can see that they are encircling the stick so this way you can see the difference between these two insects and they do not uh, uh, chase you they may be one or two will sting you but it will not chase you so this this is not a domesticated honey bee uh, okay and then coming to apis serana they are added in boxes like this 
and then uh, you are able to see the insect this is uh, smaller than the rock bee but larger than the india uh, sorry larger than the little bee it is uh, smaller than dorsetta but larger than the floria uh, it is domesticated uh, and native to india and then constructs multiple combs in darkness and does not shift the place often found inside tree trunks and then it's a uh, honey yield is around 5 to 10 kg per hive per year successful throughout uh, india and uh, good pollinator it's a good pollinator so we provide uh, training uh, to the beekeepers in the tnau and uh, it is on 6th of every month uh, so normally on the 5th of every month they conduct the mushroom training on the 6th uh, of every month if it is a working day uh, we will conduct the uh, training and if it is a holiday it will be con conducted on the next day uh, or uh, whenever next working day comes so if it falls on saturday sunday we don't conduct on the saturday or sunday it will be on the monday uh, so normally sixth of every month we conduct the training program at our university more details you can contact our university uh, or me i have given my mobile number at, at the start of the slide i will also the share the powerpoint with your uh, uh, with madam so you can get it at any time uh, so uh, i am on whatsapp you can send me whatsapp instead of calling me uh, I think uh, because many times we may be in meetings or classes, we have UG, PG and PhD classes. So you may send WhatsApp, uh, I will be able to reply to you. And then the mellifera or the apis uh, uh, mellifera, it is called the Italian honeybee or the European honeybee. And you can see this honeybee, uh, uh, all the honeybees, and they have the nature, I told you, to use the mouth part to collect honey and the legs to collect the uh, pollen. You see the body of the honeybee is covered with a lot of hairs. Uh, you, you know the difference between a bee and a wasp? Wasp is very smooth and uh, its body is not covered with hair. So wasp is mainly uh, adapted to uh, be a predator. It eats on other insects. Whereas honeybee has been modified to collect pollen. So because of that, a lot of hairs are there. When it sits on a flower, the pollen will stick to the body and then it will be able, able to clean it up and then collect it in the hind legs and then use it as a food for it. So the, it is reared in big boxes like this that is called the Langstroth bee box. Uh, it's very big, big sized box because this honeybee is larger than the Indian honeybee and smaller than the rock bee. So it is uh, in between the size of Indian honeybee and the rock bee. Uh, among the ra rared bees, this is the largest one. Among the domesticated bees, this is the largest one. And uh, not only that, not only the size is big, but the population per hive is also more. In Indian honeybee, normally you see around 10,000 honeybees per hive, whereas in Italian honeybee, you see around 30,000 honeybees per hive normally, and it can go up to 60,000 or even 1 lakh, depending on uh, how many super chambers you are having. The brood chamber is found in the bottom, and super chamber is found on the top. And uh, the brood chamber, you see the honeybee rearing its young ones, and in the super chamber, honeybee is storing the honey. So if you add more and more super chambers, more honeybees, you can have, but it all depends on the food uh, that is available in the area. If no food is available in your area, you can't rare honeybees. So uh, I don't see any place like that, but every place will be having some kind of plants that will be flowering in some part of the year. So you can keep the honeybees accordingly. And uh, the next one is the dammer bee or the stingless bees. Uh, <clears throat> here, this is called the Tetragonla eridipenis. Uh, so the one that you see on the top, it is written as ACB, that is Tetragonla carbonaria that is found in Australia. The one you see in the bottom, that is Tetragonla eridipenis. And uh, you see the brood uh, is somewhat clustered brood uh, or the clustered nest of the uh, stingless bee. You can rare it in small pots or you can rare it in small boxes. So these are the five different honeybees that are found in our uh, nation. Uh, so uh, if you come to, uh, so that, that is about the bee species. But if you take honeybee as a unit or a single family, inside the bee family, you see uh, a queen, drone and worker. There will be only one queen normally in a uh, colony. So you all know that and that is very fascinating to study the bee family it's very fascinating there are a few hundred drones in a colony 
and several thousand workers. There are several thousand workers. So a bee colony, if you want to define, a bee colony is comprised of a single queen, a few hundred drones, and several thousand workers. Uh, so the queen is the largest among the three uh, castes. They normally say caste um, in honeybees. It's not like the caste uh, system that we have in human beings, but it's uh, uh, you can say it's a uh, uh, different uh, reproducing individual. You can say a reproductive uh, community or whatever it is. Uh, so the only male insect uh, among the three is drone. The worker is a female. Queen is also a female. Worker, we say it's a sterile female which cannot mate with the drone. The queen is the fertile female which mates with the drone uh, in the first one week of its lifetime. And then it keeps on laying eggs for the three to four years that it lives in the uh, beehive. So only first one week or 10 days it goes for mating. When it goes for mating, the spermatica that is present inside the abdomen of the queen is filled with sperms. It may mate with uh, five or six drones or uh, seven or eight drones uh, during the first one week or 10 days. Every time it mates with a drone and then it comes back to the colony, the drone will die. And then it, again, it flies back in the uh, drone congregation area and it may be mated by another drone. And this way, every time the spermatica fills up to some extent and in after five or seven or eight drones uh, mate, the spermatica will be full. After that, the queen never goes for mating and then it keeps on laying eggs. This is the nature of the queen. So a queen, we say it's the egg-laying individual in the colony. Uh, it's the only egg-laying individual which can produce workers and drones. Uh, and also a queen also it can produce. Uh, so the honeybee queen, if it uh, lays a uh, fertile egg, from that females will emerge. If the queen lays a sterile egg, that is unfertilized egg, from that drones will emerge. So based on this, the queen has a control to either lay a fertilized egg or an unfertilized egg. Fertilized egg means the queen will mix some sperms from its spermatica with its egg and then lay. In this case, it is called a fertilized egg. If the queen lays its egg without mixing the sperm from the spermatica, then that is called an unfertilized egg that will produce drones. This is the sex differentiation. By seeing this size, you can uh, see that the queen is having a long abdomen that is not covered by the wings, whereas worker is having a short abdomen that is covered by the wings, and drone is having large eyes, you can see, and then its uh, uh, abdomen is not sharp, but it is rounded with hairs, and the drone does not have a sting, so it cannot sting, whereas a queen and a worker has the sting and they can sting. But queen never stings human beings. It, it will sting other queens. So in a colony, if new queen, more queens are emerging, uh, the newly emerged queen will kill other queens and then it will take over the colony. So in such conditions, the queen uh, uh, will use its uh, sting. Otherwise, it doesn't use its sting. So this is about the bee caste. And the worker is doing all the work of the community, I mean, of the bee, bee, bee colony. Uh, it will feed the young ones. It will feed the queen, it feeds the drones, it collects the food from outside. It is also acting as a nursing bee. So the, in a colony, honey bee queen is the laying mother and honey bee worker is the nursing mother. First 20 days of its life, it spends inside the colony as a nursing mother. Then after 20 days to 70 days, when it leaves, it goes out and collects uh, nectar, pollen and water. And then this way, it is doing all the works in the colony. So it is called a worker. Drone is having only one role, that is uh, fly from any colony to any colony and then uh, in the fly in the sky and mate with the queen. So that is the only role. So only few drones are produced, few hundred drones, I said, and uh, worker, several th thousand workers are produced. This is the nature. Anibi worker will go to the same colony again and again. It will not go to another colony. And if it is going to another colony, the workers in that colony will not allow. Whereas drones are free to move from any colony to any colony because they are few in numbers and they are important for reproduction. So drone is not stopped by the workers to enter any colony. Free pass for the drone to enter any colony. Queen does not move out of the colony and it remains in the same colony and keeps on laying eggs. If you introduce manually a one queen into another colony, the workers will not accept. They will immediately sting the queen and they will kill it. So queen 
cannot go from one colony to another. Worker cannot go from one colony to another. Drones can go. But we have methods to introduce the queen from one colony to other and also workers from one colony to other. We have methods. How to do that? We have to acclimatize the smell of the queen with the colony by putting inside a cage. And after some time, you release, it will accept after three or four days. Immediately, if you release, it will not accept. So such things we should understand while doing the beekeeping. And uh, see here, these are the photographs. And uh, the one on the right side where a marking is made on the uh, uh, thorax of the queen, that is the queen. And in the middle, what you are seeing is the drone. And on the left, what you are seeing is the, uh, uh, that is the worker. Uh, so the queen is the largest and in between is the uh, drone and smallest is the worker. So this is the egg of the honeybee. The honeybee has laid the egg in the middle of the cells. You are able to see that one queen will lay only one egg in a single uh, cell. Uh, you know one thing, the workers, I said they are females. And suddenly when a queen is lost in a colony, and if no, no new queen is introduced or produced, then the workers, they start laying eggs. Uh, because uh, the ovary develops in the worker, but it will not mate with the drone, but it will start laying eggs. So when the worker lay the eggs, they will lay more number of eggs per cell. So from that, you can know that there is no queen in this colony, only worker is laying. When worker is laying egg, it will lay only unfertilized egg because, because it is not mating with the drone, it will lay only unfertilized egg. So because it is laying only unfertilized egg, only drones will come from the eggs laid by the worker. So these are the things that we should understand. This is the larva of the honeybee, uh, C-shaped grub. And after they become pupa, they are sealed by the workers with the uh, wax that they produce in the abdomen, their abdomen. So in this uh, comb, you are able to see the worker larva and uh, the pupa that is sealed by the uh, cells and then there is one cell with uh, pollen that is collected. You are able to see one or two cells that are collect pollen. So this is the uh, thing. And then the queen lays the egg and then worker will give first two days royal jelly. Royal jelly is nothing but a milk-like substance produced by the worker in its hypopharyngeal glands or salivary gland. And that it gives as a food. Uh, it's very highly proteinaceous and also fat content in it. Uh, that uh, is secreted by the worker and then given as the food for the honeybee for the first two days. And after third day, it will give pollen and nectar mixed that is called bee bread that is given to the honeybee. And then after few days, they just uh, become pupa. And when they become pupa, they are sealed by the uh, honeybee. And after 20 days or something, the adult will come out. After 12 days or 15 days, the, the adult will come out. This is the life cycle of the honeybee. If you see the total life uh, cycle of the honeybee, the queen emerges within 16 days, uh, and but live it will live for around uh, maybe uh, five years uh, maximum in uh, the mellifera. In Serena, it lives for around two years. Uh, so, so it develops in the shortest time, but it lives for longest period. Uh, I said uh, la, the la, royal jelly is given for first two days. That is only for the worker. But if it is queen, if it is become going to become a queen, they will be given only royal jelly. That is that is why it is called royal jelly. It is a food for the royal. So five days when it is in the larval period, it will be given uh, only uh, the royal jelly. And then eight more days, it will be in pupil period. And then on the 16th day, the adult will emerge. In the worker, Around six days, it will be in the larval period, during which first two days, it will eat a royal jelly. And third to sixth day, it will eat pollen and nectar. And then for 12 more, 12 more days, they will be in the pupal period. And then finally, on 21st day, the uh, worker will emerge. This will live for around 70 days. First 20 days, it will serve as a nurse bee inside the colony. Then it will serve as a foraging bee outside the colony. Drone has around 24 days of living. And uh, uh, I don't know, 24 days of development uh, from egg to adult. And after becoming adult, it may live for around 90 days. So during which uh, they'll be moving from colony to colony and then eating the honey that is collected by the worker. And then they will mate with the queen in the fl uh, flight, not inside the hive. The mating is taking place only in the flight. So the cells are that you see on the top uh, that are uh, cylindrical, 
uh, they are uh, they are the queen cells uh, that will be formed at the bottom of the comb and then the worker cells are smaller and then drone cells are bigger so that's about the life of the honey bee and then coming to the uh, the box that we are using for rearing the honey bees you are seeing here on the bottom what you see is the bottom board and above that you are seeing the brood chamber and brood chamber is the place where the honey bees rear their young ones egg larva and pupa and then once they become adult they 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 start uh, being the workers and then you are seeing a queen excluder in the in between the brood chamber and the super chamber super chamber uh, is nothing but the honey chamber so in between the honey chamber and brood chamber you are the queen you have the queen excluder uh, if you don't put the queen excluder the queen may come to the super chamber and lay its eggs normally the honey bee in a comb if you see on the top you will see the uh, honey and below that you see the brood so the same nature we are using in the box on the top chamber we use it for honey collection and in the bottom chamber you rear it for brood we are using the nature of the honey bee for designing the hive uh, by chance the queen may go up normally it lays only eggs in the bottom by chance it may go up to the super chamber if it lay eggs in the super chamber what will happen we will not be able to collect honey from it lot of larva will be mixed with the honey uh, so that is why we don't allow the queen to go to the top to lay the eggs so in the super chamber queen will not be seen only workers will be seen collecting the honey and then on the top there are two lids inner lid and the outer lid so this is the structure of the beehive uh, that we use for ap serana that is indian bee as well as italian honey bee so here also the same thing is shown bottom board the brood chamber then queen excluder then the super chamber inner cover outer cover normally the super chamber may be either shallow or deep you are saying you are seeing that the brood chamber is deep or it is it is uh, taller whereas the super chamber is not tall that is called a shallow super if it is of the same size as the brood that is called as deep super deep super can be used in places where we get more honey where the place is very resourceful uh, whereas so uh, the shallow super we use in the places where less honey is got and these are some uh, equipments that are useful for uh, rearing the honey bees uh, this is uh, uh, called a smoker that is uh, if you put some uh, coconut uh, this thing uh, fiber in it and then uh, or some cloth in it make a fire and then press the bellow uh, initially some fire will come then it will start giving smoke that smoke if you use while uh, handling the honey bees it will not sting you uh, the bees will become calm so this person is using a smoke smoker and then he is using all the uh, protective clothing on the face he is using the bee veil through which he can see the bees but bees will not sting him because of the uh, that uh, net that is present in it then protective clothing gloves eye boot everything so this is how a apiarist uh, handles a bee bee in other countries but in our country this is all ignored but if you see the mellifera beekeeper in the north in india they use many of these uh, protective clothing but the people in south uh, who are handling the serana they are very careless i can say otherwise they are very experienced so that they handle the bees uh, in a way that they don't sting or something but uh, uh, very much it is ignored but uh, while i do the training i give the training i always teach the people to use the bee veil and gloves at least and a full hand shirt so these three things are a minimum for handling the honey bees so here also you are able to see a bee veil a frame and then uh, gloves and everything so this is called a honey extractor uh, the extraction of honey is different uh, in the rock bee and the uh, uh, the hive bees the bees uh, apis uh, serana and apis mellifera the indian and italian honey bees which are rarely in boxes you don't squeeze the honey but you extract the honey you place the uh, honey uh, combs in the uh, extractor and rotate the uh, that is uh, the liver then you will be able to get the honey you keep the frame again back in the colony then the honey bees will collect honey again in the same frames the same comb if you destroy the comb then the honey bee has to again construct the comb to construct the comb again it has to secrete lot of wax from its abdomen to secrete lot of wax it has to eat lot of honey and lot of pollen because of this your honey yield will decrease drastically 
So you have to reduce the workload of the honey bee so that it will collect more honey. For that, you have to reuse the comb again, again and again. So that's all about the uh, the rearing of the honey bees. Now coming to what are the benefits that we get from the honey bees? Bee products: honey, royal jelly, bee wax, and then pro pollen, propolis, bee venom. So there are six important products that we get from the honey bees: honey, royal jelly, bee wax, and the other than that, pollen, propolis, bee venom. All of these are having some medicinal purpose, then uh, food purpose, and so many other purposes. And then cross pollination and yield increase in crops are uh, is very important benefit. So if I talk about this uh, individually about the honey, royal jelly, bee wax, it will take a lot of time. However, I will tell in brief about that. Uh, the uh, the honey it is rich in fructose, and then next to that is glucose, and then uh, the uh, sucrose is found only two percent. Other things are there, some enzymes, undetermined things, minerals are there. So, what makes honey so special? So, it's all the uh, undetermined things that are present in the honey that is most important to make the honey as a uh, very, very special item. The, the enzymes, the vitamins, so many things are there. So, that is the most important thing. Apart from that, the fructose. The fructose is a sugar that is present in fruits. So, eating honey is equivalent to eating fruits. So uh, that's what people say. So honey is a very special food. So in India, honey is used as a medicine, whereas in other countries, honey is used as a food. In India, the per capita honey consumption per year per person is only 20 grams, whereas in Europe, it is around 1.5 kilogram to 3 kilogram, uh, whereas in U USA, it is around 1 kilogram. So there they take honey as a food. Here we take honey as a medicine. That is why we are using very less honey. Honey can be used as a food. Uh, so in from today onwards, you, uh, you have a practice that instead of sugar, you start taking honey. Uh, you just replace your sugar intake with honey. Don't take too much. Maybe around 15 grams to 20 grams you can take in a day uh, honey. And that too in divided uh, doses. Uh, and then uh, in the morning, if you take honey, and then you go for a walk, you'll, you will find it very brisk because glucose immediately uh, gives you energy. Fructose uh, takes some time to uh, release, get released. And then, so, so immediate energy and uh, slow release also is taking place. And then all the other benefits that you get from the honey uh, uh, that, that prevents uh, your muscle breakdown and so many other things. In the night, if you take honey, uh, before going to bed in milk or uh, water, that is going to give you good sleep uh, for the night. So in any way, before exercise or after exercise, before going to bed or in any way, you can take honey. Uh, uh, that's a very good food. So th th this, uh, if you want to know about honey, you read in our uh, traditional literature, even the medical doctors nowadays, uh, they start pre pre prescribing honey as a food. Uh, so that is what. And then uh, other than that, the royal jelly. Royal jelly is nothing but the secretion of the worker honeybee that is given to the queen uh, and the young larvae. Uh, and this royal jelly is uh, rich in uh, protein and fat uh, that uh, the, the queen that is eating royal jelly develops in a very short time and lives for five years. Whereas those which are not eating royal jelly throughout its lifetime or only first two days they are taking, they are uh, becoming a uh, worker and then they are living only for 70 days. So this made the man to think about the usefulness of royal jelly, even though there are not many uh, direct proofs for its benefits, but uh, there are a lot of beliefs that any uh, royal jelly can make you keep you young for a long time. So for male as well as female, if you take royal jelly, it will uh, keep you young. So that is the reason for the high cost of this royal jelly. It is sold in capsules uh, and then uh, as, as a mix with honey and so many other formulations, it is available. And so royal jelly is very costly and uh, very important byproduct of honeybees. Then bee wax, that is uh, useful for making uh, the, the lipstick and then the face creams and many other cosmo cosmetic things, and also the 
the we make honey comb i mean uh, comb foundation sheet from the bee wax and then provide it to the honey bee immediately they will construct comb on it so for that also bee wax is useful it is useful in varnishes and so many other things so bee wax is a very useful material and and in churches in catholic churches they use a 10% of the candle as bee wax in olden days only bee wax was used in churches for making candles nowadays it is not available in plenty so it is mixed with the regular wax so this bee wax is having similar property like the petroleum wax but the advantage is there is no smoke at all if you use this candle there is no smoke at all and many other benefits are there for this one and then pollen that is collected by the honey bees from the hind legs that can be collected in the what to say some kind of pollen trap when honey bees enter into the hive they will leave the pollen uh, that in the trap and then they will enter into so this way you can collect in a italian honey bee within 1 hour 50 grams of pollen so that will be uh, that is very highly medicinal in property and then it is used for treatment of cancer and other things so propolis also is like that propolis is nothing but the honey bees collect some gummy material from the trees and then they they seal seal the cracks and crevices in the hive a black material uh, that that resin like material is called propolis that is also very uh, medi having medicinal property it is used for making toothpaste and other things so bee venom is uh, a, a neurotoxin that is produced by the honey bees in their venom uh, gland and then uh, injected into the human body or any uh, intruder uh, and then uh, that venom can be extracted using a honey venom extractor that is a small electrical unit kept inside in front of the hive and if it sits on it it gets electric shock and stings on the glass and then that glass is collecting uh, uh, the venom which can be scraped using a blade and then that can be useful that venom is uh, bee venom uh, 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 it is uh, uh, useful in treatment of the uh, the arthritis and other problems even ap therapy is one subject that is dealt in other countries but not allowed in india that that can uh, give you uh, a, the, the person allows to sting the honey bee on the uh, painful area of uh, the knee and other things and it prevents uh, the uh, or it it uh, cures it cures the knee problems that pain in the knee and other things so in this way the honey bee derived products are very useful uh, in, in all the ways and then honey bee is good uh, pollinator and then uh, uh, the honey bee gets its food from the nature some plants are giving nectar some plants are giving pollen and some plants are giving pollen as well as nectar so if you see here the plants these are the plants that give uh, pollen uh, nectar to the honey bees tamarind neem soap nut and so many other trees mostly trees they give lot of nectar to the honey bees and the many plants like sorghum maize and then millets and then coconut castor these are the plants that give honey bees the uh, pollen that uh, that is a food for the honey bees and there are so many fruit trees and fruit plants that give both pollen as well as nectar to the honey bees so in this way the plants are very useful to the honey bees and in another way if you see uh, how one one benefit is for the honey bees what is the benefit to the plant pollination so fruits and nuts are pollinated by honey bees vegetable or vegetable crops are pollinated by honey bees oil seed crops are pollinated by honey bees forage crops then coffee cardamom so many other plants all these plants are benefited by the honey bees so if they are benefited by honey bees what is the yield increase for example if you take mustard it is 43% yield increase sunflower 32 to 48 cotton 17 to 19 onion 93 apple 44 like this every plant yield is increased by honey bees if honey bees are not there so this much yield increase yield decrease will take place and now uh, now we know that honey bees are useful and they can be useful in pollination now there is no animal in this world without uh, that is uh, enemies so honey bee is also having lot of enemies such as wax moth wasp birds ants and hive beetles if you see uh the combs uh they are affected by this type of uh the the, the that is uh, uh web like uh, material on the top that is uh, caused by wax moth that is lepidopteran larva 
uh, and then that larva will make the holes in the wax eat the wax having the uh, the proteinaceous material in the wax so this is uh, the wax moth damage and these are the wasps that will sit in front of the hive and then catch hold of the honey bee and then it will eat a lot of honey bees so by because of this lot of honey bees die and slowly the honey bee will fly away from you because of the attack by the wax moth that is called the deserting of the comb the so this is the paper wasp you have you must have seen this type of wasp this is very dangerous even one or two if it stings that can cause uh, life damage for you so be careful with this uh, uh, yellow banded wasp and then ants some of the ants they enter into the hive and then they eat the uh, honey bees some ants they eat the honey in any way ants should not be allowed to enter into the colony so when you are rearing in the boxes you can put some grease in the leg of the stand so that they are not having so this is the uh, ant that will capture the honey bees and they will eat so there are some birds uh, called bee eater birds merops apiaster merops orientalis these are the birds very beautiful birds but they eat lot of honey bees so sometimes uh, uh, when other crops are not there in the field only honey bees are there so they will in a large number they will be sit, sitting around the apiary and then they will be eating the honey bees and reducing the population of the honey bees so sometimes they will eat the queen when they are flying for mating flight they will eat they will capture and eat the queen and you will not get back your queen because queen is very large in size easily it can locate the queen and eat the queen so that is also a problem this is also a black uh, drongo uh, eats on the uh, honey bees and there are some mites that are present in the honey bees these are eight legged creatures acari and uh, there are uh, uh, both the, uh, the endoparasitic and ectoparasitic ectoparasitic means uh, living on the outside of the body and eating the blood of the honey bee uh, uh, so like this ectoparasitic whereas this is endoparasitic going into the trachea of the uh, honey bee and then uh, eating so all these things can be cured using sulfur or formic acid and other treatments and there are so many diseases of the honey bees such as the viral disease so just like the covid that attacked us and uh, uh, this is called thaisac brood virus uh, this virus has uh, caused a very serious problem to the indian honey bees in uh, tamil nadu particularly in the 80s and 90s even today it is causing around 20 to 30% of the loss of the colonies there is no cure for this only uh, hygiene uh, for this and there is no vaccination or anything we are trying various molecular methods such as the uh, gene silencing and other methods but uh, so far no uh, concrete success has been got uh, whereas some plant products such as the papaya leaf extract and then turmeric powder uh, that has given in the fruit sorry sorry feeding normally when honey bees are not getting food from outside we mix uh, sugar and water and then provide us uh, sugar solution to the honey bees and the honey bees will eat it and then they will become stronger so in the sugar solution you can mix uh, some plant products and give and then it can give some protection against this virus and then the european fowl brood this is a bacterial uh, uh, disease this gives a bad smell so it is called fowl brood uh, this can be cured using some antibiotics but antibiotics are not recommended in the honey bee keeping nowadays so uh, it is better to discard the colonies and then uh, minimizing the pesticide hazard nowadays uh, the bee decline is taking place worldwide worldwide bee, bee decline because of the toxic effect of insecticides then uh, the habitat modification you are cutting down the trees we are cutting down the trees and because of that large the, the place to live Uh, for the open nesting honey bees as well as cavity nesting honey bees is lost so because of that the bees are decreasing in number so we have to uh, rare large number of honey bees and then uh, we we have to keep our yield in high uh, levels so the insecticides you have to avoid so how to avoid insecticides you don't spray during the flowering period of the crop one thing you try to spray in the evening hours instead of morning because morning more of the pollen will dehisce and then uh, honey bees will be seen on the flowers in the evening hours less honey bees will be seen on the flowers that is one way so in these ways you can and you can go for pesticides that are causing less harm to the honey bees like like biocontrol agents and other things 
and you should not use dust and other drifting poisons instead you can use poisons such as the granules in the soil so in this way you can prevent uh, selective poison selective toxins and then uh, biocontrol agents in this way botanicals like that you can use neem and other products you can use on the plant this way you can minimize damage to the honeybees so i actually madam was telling about the uh, the web pages that i have created maybe this will be very useful but before telling that i want to tell about uh, the committee in which i was a part of it that is economic advisory council to the prime minister i uh, i was uh, involved uh, uh, as a member in that uh, committee for developing beekeeping policy for the country this happened between 2018 and 19 so i will just show that uh, pdf to you this is the beekeeping development committee report you can download it from the internet the link is given uh, in this uh, every every aspect is given about the the honey bees and you can just see that uh, there are some information about see the bee products diversity of the bees various bee species and then uh, the bee products what is the pro pollen propolis royal jelly and all those things and then the recommendations finally the recommendations of the beekeeping uh, uh, committee is given how to improve beekeeping in the country uh, so i have given the link for it so it was a very uh, means prestigious uh, committee in which i was part of it uh, and uh, maybe you, you can uh, see this one thing and then uh, coming to the web page that i have created you can just see my web page uh, it is present and just as you can type my name and tnau you can see my web page and then i have given link for all these things here i have given the link for entomology and resources and then beekeeping resources if you click the beekeeping resources you can see a uh, lot of information in that so if you see presentations so these are the presentations actually made by students during my classes which i have just uh, uh, uploaded in the youtube or uh, yeah so is is it audible what i am talking yes sir yes sir fine fine no problem actually it says low resources is affecting your audio audio quality okay maybe fine so these are some of the powerpoints that i have uploaded you can download it and here you can see some word documents uh, uploaded uh, most of the things are prepared by students and then corrected by us and then uh, uploaded in the uh, internet only for the educational purposes not for any other uh, purposes only educational purposes uh, and then you you have some videos also uh, i have many other videos but i don't find time to upload them and maybe in the coming days you can see in the same website you can see the uh, videos you can just play any one of the video and then you can just uh, see uh, the the contents so for example catching uh, uh, feral uh, feral colony just uh, the video hiding the feral colonies of indian bees so this is how so you can just uh, see there are some things in this take care that the queen bee should not be damaged yeah this is the contact detail so this is about the beekeeping resources and then uh, if you see the sorry yeah there are some uh, other things like uh, life table preparation and other thing excel sheets are there uh, if you are uh, working on life tables and other things you can download this and then you can prepare that uh, that is an excel sheet and then uh, i also have made some uh, excel sheet for uh, class purpose if you want to dis discuss ecology these are coming under ecology i have taken the course on ecology so fitting population growth models and also testing the distribution uh, random and clumped these things and then probit analysis 
probit analysis uh, mainly uh, for uh, the insecticide toxicity analysis this can be useful in many ways so that also i have loaded one up and then uh, those who are involved in scientific research uh, the uh, particularly in agriculture field we have the randomized block design and then the completely randomized design and other things for that the anova analysis of variance i have loaded so these are some of the useful things and here if you go to this uh, ecology that is another uh, web page so here you can see the link for all these things you can see the link for all these things so this will be up updated uh, in days to come it is just only out of my own interest that i have done these things uh, it is not any official thing or anything it is just out of interest for educating uh, students as well as public uh, those who are uh, so many we we provide training every month so the people those who come for the training they ask whether you have any powerpoints i then say you just uh, go to this website and then you download the powerpoint everything is available so this is what uh, i just wanted to show you and this is the beekeeping development committee report you can download and read everything about beekeeping in india so what is the status and everything i have given in that so that's what uh, i just want to thank uh, the organizers i have taken more time than i promised uh, so uh, thank you very much any questions uh, or anything is welcome thank you so this is my contact number and uh, email id you may note down uh, and uh, this is a whatsapp number i request you to give whatsapp instead of calling me uh, because uh, many times i may not be able to uh, lift the phone and uh, this one my email you can give email to me thank you thank you so much sir that was a wonderful presentation and uh, it was really informative and uh, the database we have created that is going to really help us so because uh, not only for research we are also educating we have papers on apiculture both at the undergraduate and the postgraduate levels and so your ppts are really going to help us uh, when we visit your uh, websites and that's a great work you have done sir because uh, uh it's going it will be helpful for students as well as our we teachers so that we can take up the materials and uh, teach the students so thank you so much uh, for the uh, great uh, presentation and if you have any questions participants you can you are free to discuss with sir Uh, excellent presentation, madam. I would like to have a few clarifications. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. I am Ramakrishnan from Soga Sayanara Janaki Malpade. Excellent presentation. Even then, I would like to, I am having some few clarifications. Okay, the sure. first one is the due to the occurrence, incidence of Deliria melonella, great wax moth, giant wax moth. Yeah. What are all the, uh, yeah, how to get rid of from those uh, Deliria melonella? And especially if we are facing uh, very severe trouble during the summer, especially during summer, uh, uh, what, what are all the strategies to be carried out to overcome the summer? Okay. So, so can I answer now? Yes, sir. And then, especially in the, in the even then in this summer, summer condition also, which species will be rearing will be ideal. Let me know the among these different types of honeybees, which species will be, which can be able to tolerate the acute summer. These are all my suggestions, uh, questions, and please explain. Okay, fine. So, uh, that's a very important uh, aspect, uh, like uh, how to manage the uh, wax moth, greater wax moth, Galeria melanola. So, the Galeria melanola is a major problem only in the Apis serana indica. It is not a problem in Apis mellifera, first thing. Uh, and second thing, uh, how to rare the anibis without uh, being affected by wax moth. It is uh, not uh, possible to avoid the 100% damage by the uh, wax moth, but it is possible to uh, have some maybe around 80% uh, uh, you can save it from the wax moth. How it is done? Normally, you maintain strong colonies. Strong colonies. The colony should be very, very strong. If, if it is, uh, uh, let's say, for example, if it is weak, say, for example, there are six frames in the brood chamber, but there are only uh, honeybees that can cover three frames of it or four frames of it. So the remaining two frames will be affected by wax moth. It is for sure. 
So in this condition, what you have to do, you remove the extra combs. So uh, three combs you remove uh, from the colony, and instead you put a uh, dummy division board. That is a uh, plank. Yeah, that is a plank, empty plank that you just put, uh, and then <laughs> three extra frames you remove, and then store it store it in a safe place uh, so that it will not be affected by the wax moth. You can put it in a drum or something, and then put some the uh, naphthalene balls or uh, the any uh, insect uh, proof material means uh, the, the material that we use for preventing insect damage so such such material you can put inside and then you can close it uh, so in this way you can prevent the uh, damage from the uh, wax moth and uh, in particularly in summer conditions only this is a problem because there, there is dearth of food outside there is no food so in that condition, you give artificial feeding. One is to one sugar and water. You mix it and then you boil it and then cool it. After cooling it, you provide in uh, small containers and then put some sticks in a, inside so that these will not fall in, fall and die. Uh, otherwise, you can put it in a bottle and then cover it with a uh, cloth and then invert it inside uh, the uh, hive. So this way, you keep, give a lot of food. So if a lot of food is there, then the bee strength will be more. When more strength is there, wax moth cannot enter. And then another important aspect is the hive box should be made of good quality wood and there should not be any gap in the sides normally. So only in the small gaps, the wax moth enters inside and then lays its eggs. So always use a good quality uh, wood uh, and good quality hive. Many people compromise on the quality of the hive because it is available cheap in rate. So 300, 400 rupees, they get the hive. But normally the hive costs around 1000 rupees or 1500 rupees. So you find out a good hive and then you buy it. So in this way, uh, and then you clean the bottom board every uh, 10 days or 15 days, remove the wax moth eggs that are uh, laid on the sides. Any pupa is there also, you can remove. Uh, so such things you keep removing. In spite of that, if, it, if your colony is affected, you just uh, remove the bees, uh, shake the bees inside the hive, and then take it to sunlight. If you keep it in sunlight, all the larvae that is present inside will run out. So they just crush them. Don't keep the uh, frame for a long time in this uh, sunlight because the wax will melt. So just keep for a short time, the, uh, the larvae will come out, then you crush the larvae. So these are the ways how you can prevent the, uh, the wax moth damage. So mellifera is less affected by wax moth. You can go rare this mellifera in places where there is more problem of serana. Uh, so these are the things. Uh, and uh, so rare the box with high, high, high population, high population, then it will not be affected by wax moth. That's what. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm having one more clarification. So is there any possibility to preserve the honey, store the honey, collected honey, using the honey extractor. Yeah, yeah not what, what we do, yes. we do, we do what is called as processing. Processing of honey is nothing but heating the honey to 60 degrees centigrade, keeping it for 30 minutes, and then uh, bottling them. After cooling, after cooling, you have to bottle them. In this process, you can kill the yeast cells in the uh, honey. Uh, th that way, honey can be store, preserved for one year without fermentation. Otherwise, raw honey, if you collect and then keep in bottles uh, without uh, processing, it will get uh, fermented within two months uh, period. But raw honey has a lot of benefits. Many people will ask for raw honey, give them raw honey. Uh, but if you want to sell it in market, then you have to go for processing. In Marthandam, Kanyakumari district, uh, that is the hub of beekeeping in Tamil Nadu, they do this uh, manually. Uh, by keeping uh, water in a container and then uh, inside that they keep the uh, container with honey and then heat it. Uh, they allow the water to boil but the honey will become frothing. No? They don't allow the honey to boil. At this condition they keep it for half an hour and then uh, they cool it and then filter it through a cloth and then finally bottle it. In this way you can preserve the honey for a long period up to one year. Normally, honey does not have any spoiling time. It will become fermented. It will become dark. When it becomes dark, we say that it is having more HMF. So these are not good honey standards. They will not pass the standards uh, for honey. 
so otherwise uh, does not cause much harm if you eat the fermented honey or that honey that is having more F hmf that is hydroxymethyl furfural it will become dark uh, that is that is the reason for uh, that darkness so these are the things mart under omc is it is it omc omc is one thing but you have the Marthandam Beekeeper Society. You just see the website, Marthandam Beekeeper Society. They are having more than 1,000 members in that. And then every person gives the honey. And then they get it, process it, and then they bottle it. And then they will see. Not only that, the Kadi and Village Industries Board in Kanyakumari. So these are all present in Marthandam. That is the hub of beekeeping in Tamil Nadu. Uh, now, North India, they have gone much ahead of us. Earlier, up to 80s, we were the top in honey production in India. But now we are at the bottom. Now, now the Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Lucknow, sorry, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and then uh, all other states in the North India, they are doing very good uh, mellifera beekeeping. But they are also affected by low price. Why low price? Because of adulteration. Adulteration is rampant from China. Now, the lot of syrup honey has come. And then the, you must have recently read the article made by Ms. Sunita Narayan in the, uh, that is, um, uh, what is that? Uh, so Council for Science and Environment. She has made a very good uh, paper on that. So in the Down to Earth magazine, you must have studied the problem of adulteration. Because of adulteration, any price has gone down. So all these things are discussed in the, uh, that is, uh, any policy that has, uh, we, are, we are given in the Economic Advisory Council to Prime Minister, that the BDC committee report, you can see all these things, how to overcome this, all these things we have given this. That's what, sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Welcome. <laughs> So you have one question in the chat box also. Uh, what kind of microorganisms are present in the raw honey by Dr. Kavita Bharati? What kind of microorganisms are present in the raw honey? Uh, normally, uh, the, uh, the 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 yeast yeast is the most important uh, thing, and uh, that is not going to cause any harmful effect. That is only going to cause uh, the uh, fermentation of honey. And uh, the, uh, the the honey, uh, what happens? Uh, it becomes alcoholic uh, after some time. Uh, the alcohol content increases, and uh, after some time, the alcohol becomes acidic. The acetic acid is produced, and because of this, uh, the acidity in the honey increases. When the acidity in the honey increases, the standards uh, prescribed is uh, only this much uh, acidity can be there in honey. So it exceeds that level. So the honey becomes uh, means uh, un unsaleable. You can't sell that. Maybe in your home, even the fermented honey, you can take, nothing will happen. But uh, standards say that honey should have only this much fermentation, only this much uh, that uh, darkness. The darkness is uh, uh, explained in terms of uh, uh, PPM, PPM of HMF. Only uh, some uh, countries uh, prescribe 20 PPM, some 40. And we are asking for 80 ppm because India is a tropical country where this HMF can form very quickly. Just by keeping outside, it will become dark. That's what. So the yeast is the most important organism. Not, not many other organisms are present in honey. So uh, does, any, uh, does it affect the nutritional aspect of honey like that? Uh, if, if it, uh, as you said, it becomes uh, more acidic like that. Yeah. So... If we consume, uh, any nutritional aspect is going to get affected or it is as such? No, nutritional effect is not because honey, mainly the nutritional content in honey is only sugar, ma'am. There is no other uh, nutritional, there is no protein, there is no fat, nothing is there in uh, honey. It's only sugar and in sugar, uh, uh, the sucrose is only 2%, whereas the glucose and fructose are present in higher uh, uh, values. So the sugar will convert into alcohol the sugar will convert into alcohol and then into acid. So these are the things other than that, uh, the, the, the sugar level will come down, ma'am. Sugar level will come down. So that is the only thing. So we have another question. How to know the purity of honey? Oh, yes. Quality, great. Quality can be determined by the color or uh, anything else. Uh, this is a very tough question. Because uh, there is no foolproof method as of yet. If you can download the FSSA uh, guidelines uh, or the standards, standards, the FSSA is making a standard every day 
to prevent the adulteration because every uh, new uh, standard that we are bringing is be, being circumvented by the people who do the adulteration so that is the most uh, difficult uh, thing so uh, testing the purity of honey normally we explain fees method f i e h e there is one scientist called fee so he gave a method now it is not included in any standard but that is what we tell the people like uh, how it is done we mix honey with uh, uh, the diethyl ether diethyl ether we just uh, put it in a pestle and mortar and grind it honey and uh, diethyl ether and keep it separately the what will happen after some time uh, the the ether will start going out but before that what we make we make another solution that is uh, the resorcinol flakes are dissolved in uh, the hydrochloric acid hcl strong hcl and uh, we just take some 10 mg and then dissolve it in around 10 ml of uh, this uh, hcl hcl just 10 mg of resorcinol in 10 ml of uh, hydrochloric acid and then what we do we uh, we have already mixed the honey with uh, with uh, that is uh, ether ether that ether layer is slowly poured in a watch glass and then allowed to dry in the middle so what we do we take this resorcinol sorry yes resorcinol in hydrochloric acid that solution we take in a glass rod and then put one drop in the middle of the watch glass uh, this reacts Uh, with the uh, with the sugars that is present in that and if it is producing a red reddishness red color that indicates the presence of added sugar if it does not produce that reddishness and it remains yellow uh, then we say there is no added sugar so this is what uh, the we tell but this method nowadays is not recommended because if the honey is old uh, somewhat old and the hmf has formed in it then it gives red red color that hmf also gives red color in that so because of this uh, the old honey is also seen as a adulterated honey so because of this now that method is not recommended uh, but the there are so many laboratory methods that are uh, giving including the specific gravity of honey normally the specific gravity of honey is 1.35 to 1.4 then water content it is less than 20% and then uh, the fructose to glucose ratio it is normally one or more than one and then the uh, sucrose content normally it is less than 5% and then uh, you have the hmf normally it is around 40 mg or less than that then acidity uh, there is some percentage uh, uh, like uh, the acidity is measured in some value and then that that is also given so like this there are around 18 parameters if honey fulfills all the 18 parameters it is said as good honey and recently they have included many molecular techniques also because they are mixing the plant based syrup like rice syrup beetroot beet syrup then corn syrup cane syrup all these things are fermented and then the fructose content is increased in it and it uh, tastes very similar to honey these are called syrup honey so the adulteration has gone to very high levels so how to uh, prevent that so that is why some molecular methods also the latest method they are recommending is called nmr nuclear magnetic resonance and uh, that uh, instrument is uh, available only in one laboratory in the country entire country in the nddb uh, laboratory they are having uh, and uh, apart from that you have to send it to germany to see the purity so these are the problems with the testing the purity of the honey that is why in the bdc recommendation we have recommended the traceability of honey traceability means starting from the origin from which uh, hive it was produced which apiary it was produced up to the market now you you must have been seeing in amazon or flipkart or whatever it is the day you uh, order it from the time where it is packed from the time uh, till the end, time it reaches you you are able to track it that is called traceability so that traceability you should bring in honey that is the only solution to prevent tra- means uh, adulteration this is what we have recommended in the uh, honey uh, that uh, recommendation is what sir so there are any questions uh, there in the chat box sir yeah 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 
how many kilometers does a honey bee travel to gather pollen or honey and uh, do you have any suggestions to improve pollination by bees in food crops like sunflower yeah yeah fine honey bees they say mellifera travels around 2 to 3 kilometers uh, and uh, serana travels around 1 to 2 km serana is a slightly lower uh, distance flyer that's all and then uh, so we can keep uh, honey bee boxes in the sunflower field uh, 10 and when they are at 10% flowering uh, normally not only sunflower any crop if you want to pollinate you can when it is at 10% flowering you move the box to that place in my bee keeping there are two types of bee keeping one is called stationary bee keeping another one is called migratory bee keeping migratory bee keeping can be for two reasons one is for pollination another is for honey collection if you are interested in honey collection you move to that uh, region um, in both the conditions and at 10% flowering you have to move the boxes to that region so that honey bees will start uh, going to that crop and then it will do good pollination and also it will collect lot of honey for you so for all these things you have to move the colonies in the night time night time only not during day time uh, we have to move the colonies because in the day time lot of foragers would have gone out in the night all they would have come back at that time you tra- put them in truck and then you trek from one place to another and then this way you can increase your pollination as well as honey production another question on conception of propolis as supplement is good for all or it should be restricted based on the allergic conditions yeah, allergic conditions are there for all the honey bee products pollen is allergic to somebody then uh, bee venom is very allergic to somebody then the propolis can be allergic Uh, uh so even honey can be allergic normally it is not allergic but if honey contains some pollen or something and if that pollen is allergic to that person it can make cause allergic reactions so this is something very important and the question is also very relevant and uh, the allergic symptoms normally appears not for everyone maybe one in 1000 maybe having this allergic uh, thing and uh, in our uh, country we are very means uh, not seriously bothered about this but in other countries where they are very seriously <coughs> bothered about this because the consumption is more in our country the un- consumption is less there the consumption is more so we have to test it if any allergic reaction is there we have to discontinue uh, that is there is no question about it venom also can be allergic to somebody if any bee stings in one place you you will see there is swelling Day, there is irritation on the third day it becomes fine but if for somebody the after stinging if there is some reaction on different part of the body so it is stinging on your hand and it is causing reaction on your face so such things you have to immediately go to a doctor and take anti histamines and then uh, uh, any other uh, therapy that the uh, uh, the doctor prescribes you have to take uh, so that is the only thing even pollen can be allergic uh, that day one person told me uh, he took some hive uh, that along with the comb some honey and immediately he got some irritation in the mouth and then he he, he fainted so such things this is one in one lakh maybe you can say one in one lakh this type of problem can come so we need we need not be worried about it so you just uh, test it and not uh, it is not like uh, guinea pig or anything i am saying you test it like that it can be a problem only 1 in 1000 or 1 in 1 lakh so uh, so you, you have to be careful i can't say that you can just like that you can do that you have to be careful but it is very rare condition uh, that uh, we are seeing we are teaching every day we are training giving training to so many people but we don't get complaints from many uh, very 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 few extremely few yes yeah i have a question here yeah am i audible ma'am yes. Hi, yes sir yeah actually uh, i want to know uh, there are two, two small questions that uh, is there any training program or uh, what training programs we can have so that we can know more about this bee keeping and all that for a young entrepreneurs and the second question is about the medicinal properties of this honey bee yeah yeah actually uh, there are training programs in various uh, parts of the country and uh, particularly with respect to tamil nadu uh, in tamil nadu agriculture university we are providing uh, training on 6th of every month it's a pay and learn training program and they they charge uh, around 590 rupees including tax uh, it's a one day program only 
sixth of every month, uh, morning nine o'clock to evening five o'clock, and then a certificate will be provided, uh, and then uh, a booklet will be provided. So uh, that will be very useful to start a beekeeping. And then uh, National Bee Board, National Bee Board is now uh, sponsoring uh, seven-day training programs uh, throughout the country. So you can identify uh, some uh, uh, that uh, institutes, agriculture universities and also the KVKs, Krishi Vigyan Kendras of ICR and other things uh, who are in, uh, involved in. Not only that, uh, many skill development programs uh, also given to uh, the, uh, the national level institutes. You can just uh, contact and uh, also you can see the website of National Bee Board. Uh, that is NBHM, National Beekeeping and Honey Mission. And then you can know uh, we, which are the training providers. And then you can contact them and get the training, seven-day training. That's uh, sponsored by National Bee Board. So these are the training programs that are available at uh, national level. Uh, horticulture uh, is the department which is mostly concerned uh, about because the uh, National Horticulture Mission, they are uh, providing funds. So in this way, uh, you contact the horticulture department in your area. They may be able to give you uh, more information on that. Okay. Second question about the medicinal properties. Oh, of yeah, 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 medicinal properties. The medicinal properties, uh, actually I said the honey is very good uh, uh, for uh, people who are go doing exercise and the the good for sleep and so many other things. These are given in one book, uh, one book by name, uh, Honey Revolution. Honey Revolution. It is uh, by Roy Fessenden or somebody. Honey Revolution. You can Google it. It's available in Amazon and other book, bookshops. And uh, that gives you the entire detail about how honey is very helpful. This is the point of view of, uh, means uh, the allopathic doctor. But in traditional medicine, a lot of information is there. Honey has, uh, honey has been very useful in wound healing and uh, honey uh, for blood pressure regulation and so many other things. Uh, in traditional medicine, it has been very useful. But in uh, allopathic medicine also, normally in allopathy, they don't recommend uh, the uh, uh, natural material from nature. They take the active ingredient and that only is recommended. But even that allopathy doctor has given a lot of information. So that uh, Honey Revolution book, you can read to get more information on that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Has somebody has asked about information, some information about the funding sources for beekeeping projects. So I just... So yeah, I just told you about NBHM, NBB, National Bee Board, National Beekeeping and Honey Mission. You just go to that web. You can type NBHM, NBB in the Google, NBHM, NBB. And then you go into that. In that, they have given a lot of information about funding uh, the beekeeping. Uh, so you can, but what is there? Uh, they are uh, mostly in, in the development side, not on the research uh, side. For the research side, maybe you can approach a BST uh, or QPT, depending on the depending on what type of project you are making. Yes. Yeah. So okay. Um, yes, yes. I think you are yeah, giving the clarity on that um, funding sources for me. So normal uh, funding agencies also uh, they fund the beekeeping projects research or research. Yes, ma'am. So according to the topic that we choose, the DST and DBT and other uh, ACRB and other uh, resources also we can approach, ma'am. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, good afternoon, sir. One, just yeah, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, just, ma uh, yes, okay. ma uh, th thank you, sir, for, and also Ornay, sir, for giving a elaborative and informative session, sir. Just I have uh, one basic question, sir. Can you audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, ma'am. Yes, actually, I also heard about that uh, issue, sir, regarding uh, the Dower brand, honey, and all the adulterations, sir. And then it is, and all, uh, what you explained, it's very difficult to predict uh, that quality of honey. Where do we get uh, quality honey, sir? Actually, I heard, I go bought uh, from Madurai, uh, yeah. where they culture, one of the entrepreneur lady, they are cultured honey. They also... Uh, told a lot of varieties of honey, our honey, neem honey, so much of it. Is it, is it reliable, sir? Is it possible to uh, uh, give that much of uh, different types of honey, sir? Like, uh, our honey is good for diabetic and all. They are sold, sir. Is it possible? 
to yeah, yeah. actually uh, the honey from particular plants uh, we call that uh, as the real honey like uh, the litchi honey then uh, eucalyptus honey then uh, sunflower honey then moringa honey like that it is there uh, but uh, uh, what uh, what do they do as value added products they add some uh, material like ginger or they add some tulasi uh, or they add uh, like that they add something and then they make other uh, products they are value added products they are not actually the real honey products so such uh, value added products also uh, will be good for uh, health so okay. not the, it is not claimed as honey but uh, they are value added products they are value added products value added products uh, can be used there is no harm about it but the claims uh, i cannot say uh, about the claims uh, it is uh, good for this it is good for that we cannot yeah. say uh, maybe uh, their knowledge uh, based knowledge based on their knowledge base they are giving that information uh, that has to be cross verified but otherwise there are many value added products now. Right. then uh, where to where do we get sir because uh, it's not possible to do the test and quality and the take it uh, this and all not possible then where do we get uh, the kadi bhavan uh, uh, where do we get uh, that uh, reliable uh, yeah, yeah. product honey yeah. sir Nor- normally this kadi and village industries board they are selling good honey uh, that that's really a good honey like uh, uh, you can get in most of the uh, kadi shops uh, and uh, that uh, kadi and village industries that will be labeled there Uh, you can just uh, find out uh, that one uh, similarly marthandam beekeeper association they are also selling uh, good honey other than that you can directly go to the beekeeper and the beekeeper who is doing good good uh, beekeeping that uh, you can find out from your location and uh, and then and they, they they normally do, do not go for adulteration and other things so you just uh, you can go to a reliable beekeeper and then you can buy the honey Uh, but okay. uh, not all the beekeepers may be reliable but you have to find out from your experience uh, and from uh, from the, uh, the the reputation they are having based on that you can just uh, do that ma'am okay so thank you then uh, one more thing sir like apitherapy regarding you told in india they not uh, uh, started like that but in madurai that uh, one of the entrepreneur uh, lady they are uh, trying for that one sir mm, uh, i have also seen that one uh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he did some uh, stick uh, stinging uh, three times like that uh, for uh, three times you have to come for knee pain and all how yeah. much is effective like that sir it's uh, yeah. okay Therapy. for knee pain yeah apitherapy is a proven subject in other countries uh but uh, in india so far i think they have not permitted uh, uh, any any risk or anything is uh, uh, for for the individual who is doing that uh, and also the person who is getting that so the risk uh, is spread among these two people uh, but uh, yeah this this is what uh, i have heard maybe in uh, coming days uh, ap therapy may be approved uh, that that depends on how the beekeepers approach the government and then get there uh work done so right now uh, uh, to my knowledge there is no permission for ap therapy uh, officially like uh, government uh, permitted ap therapy centers are may not be there uh, maybe based on uh, the person's individual interest and uh, the uh, the person's uh, the, the person who gives the ap therapy based on his knowledge they will be doing it that's okay right. sir thank you thank you so much sir welcome okay. welcome thank you sir thank you that was a very elaborate discussion part and i think all the participants were very much interested in your lectures sir. and uh, they have clarified your doubts and thank you so much for your patient uh, time spending with us and uh, clarifying all the doubts from uh, uh, from all uh, the participants and so we move on to the next part uh, we'd like to have a feedback from all the participants who are here so anyone who is interested to talk and uh, unmute and talk and we'll have uh, we'll uh, request uh, we have two requests from the participants through mail uh, two overseas participants from one from china and one from hong kong they have requested uh, that they would like to give their feedback so can i have dr prabhu kumar sitaraman who is a post doctoral researcher from shandong university of technology china uh, sir are you on line sir are you online prabhu kumar sitaraman prabhu kumar sitaraman from china Sir, 
Uh, Kumar uh, Sitaraman, if we are not available, then can we have Kumar Kanesan? He is a scientist, LKS Faculty of Medicine, University of Hong Kong. From Hong Kong, he is a scientist from Hong Kong, Kumar Kanesan. Can we have you, sir? So these uh, two participants were requested that uh, they would be willing to give their feedback through mail. They had sent their messages and WhatsApp. So uh, if both are not available, can, we'll come back to them. Can any other participants can uh, uh, give their feedback? Yes. Uh, Ma'am, Kumar Ganesan sir is uh, now he is online. Online. Okay, Kumar Ganesan sir, please sir. Thank you so much sir for participating from Hong Kong and please sir for your feedback. Uh, Kumar Ganesan sir, you are unmuted. You can uh, talk to the resource person. Ma'am, uh, please, please request uh, any other participant, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, we can move on. As we'll come back to them later. Uh, so, any other participants can unmute and uh, you can raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Please, please. May I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Actually, thanks to the department and thanks to HOD ma'am for providing an opportunity to talk about this. And uh, it's a week long event and it's so amazing to learn all these new things and from such a resource person. And especially with the brush up of our existing knowledge with the latest developments in the field and all this will add to them in this time uh, of this uh, pandemic and all that. So it's like a blessing in disguise to having this kind of programs and to enrich our knowledge and and that too with the because it's not possible offline to attend all these sessions from because i am from the north part of india and it's so amazing to learn all these new things and thank you so much for providing an opportunity to say a few words about you peoples and all that and kudos to you and all the organizing team and thank you so much and a huge round of applause from my side thank you so much sir thank you can you just introduce yourself sir your name and from which institution you're from or your scholar i think he's gone offline uh, so thank you anyway, thank you Anuj, okay, Anuj, okay, Anuj, uh, thank you so much for your comments, for your wonderful comments. And any other participant? Rayapan, can you mute your mic? Rayapan. Jian sir, Jian sir, can you mute other participants and just unmute to only... Yes, ma'am, yes, yes ma'am. Any other participant? Can just raise your hand so that we can unmute you. The two participants have raised their hands. Uh, Dr. R. Ramakrishnan, sir, I have unmuted you. You can ask, post your question, sir. Okay. Uh, excellent. No, that's all. The one week program, excellent program organized by POC College in this one. Very excellent program. They have almost all the sessions are excellent and highly informative with various disciplines. They covered the, uh, the, all the trustees. Most of the topics are very useful and uh, they are lucid. Their presentation also lucid and very informative. And they have cleared almost all the uh, doubts and clarifications raised by the participants. Uh, my humble request is, is that you have to keep on organizing the webinars in the trust areas in sure sir sure sir taken into account faculty, faculty members but also to the uh, yeah students 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 
Thank you, Ramakrishnan, sir. It's Thank you, sir. Excellent presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, suggestions. And sure, we'll keep in touch with you as we are organizing other programs also in due course. Sure, sir. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Uh, sir. Very good afternoon to all. And my name is Dr. Justin David. I am from Arunanadar College, Karmathur. I have been attending the session for the past six days. And uh, two things I have really enjoyed uh, is array of speakers that you have brought and the interesting topics which will be useful to the students as well as to the scholars but also to laymen. So I think this honeybee keeping will be a useful resource for many of our students because we teach agriculture sciences in our rural development science where students are thought to keep, uh, thought to uh, uh, grow uh, food crops along with uh, bees actually. So beekeeping is also offered. So I really enjoyed madam. I would like to congratulate the organizers, VOC College, and also the, all the excellent list of speakers and the topics that you have uh, given for the uh, seminar or the webinar. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. It is very enlightening for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your nice works. And it's uh, uh, nice to hear that you are uh, teaching this uh, as a part of your subject also. So I think uh, it will be very useful for you. So thank you for your uh, compliment. And thank you so much. Uh, Narini, ma'am, uh, you please post your feedback. Good afternoon to all. Uh, yeah, as I said previously, there were different speakers uh, given very informative talks. Uh, our college is near, in a rural background, so uh, we are planning for a butterfly park as well as this beekeeping work. So this will be very helpful for us. Thank you very much for this nice program and thanks to all the organizers. You can have Thank bee you. park also. Just like butterfly park, you can have bee park also. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. that's what. Let's, let's go to there. Yeah, thank you. Great. I'm from Zoology Department, Pumuhar College. Okay, thank you. Which place, man? Pumuhar College, which place? Sir? Which place, man? I'm from Pumuhar College near Mailadudurai. Mailadudurai. Okay, fine. Okay. okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, we have. Uh, Two other persons also. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Sorry, ma'am. Yes, good yes, morning. This is Dr. Yes, Mubin here from yes, Justice Bashir Ahmed Said College for Women, Chennai. Uh, I have been attending your uh, FDP program for the last six days. Actually, I would like to congratulate the principal of VOC College and the head of the department and the organizing committee uh, for organizing such a beautiful lecture series meticulously. Uh, being a working person, you know, uh, three to four was an apt time for us to attend uh, because we also need to keep updating our knowledge on this field. And uh, to be very frank, entomology uh, is the core subject of a zoologist, which has been forgotten because of recent trends of biotechnology, bioinformatics, so happy that uh, you are uh, recurgitating all the lost subjects and bringing it back and a lot of scope is available for the students and researchers to do work on it. I congratulate the college and the department on the wonderful conduct of this FDP and a simple uh, or a request or a suggestion would be uh, the next time when you conduct such things, can you have paper presentations also for students and staff? You know, a technical session, one one session of a technical session by a person or a resource person, followed by at least two to three paper presentations by PG students or research scholars, which will be of much help for the students also. It will be a platform for exchange of knowledge and they will be able to communicate with the resource persons and exchange their views and ideas and knowledge. Because uh, as uh, one of the professor already told, due to this pandemic, this has become one uh, plus point, you know, though we are not able to come uh, physically to an institute to attend something or to do something, but virtually exchange of knowledge is, uh, has, has become actually gone higher in the last two years. So this can be added if possible, ma'am. It's just a request from my side. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, that was a good request by you. Yeah, we are planning for uh, such a seminar also. Uh, maybe in an offline or an on, on, online mode, uh, we are planning for paper presentations to be included also. So the topics are just being discussed. And so we'll uh, surely let you know, ma'am, when we are uh, uh, finalized with the program. And uh, thank you so much for your uh, nice uh, comments. And I am very happy that uh, uh, whatever steps we have taken has been uh, resourceful for all the participants. So, so that is the end, uh, uh, what we, every organizer needs. So whatever we try to reorganize, that should be reach into the audi audiences and also to the participants. So that uh, we have, uh, we are very happy to hear from your words that uh, this is, has been a very fruitful one for you. And the timings, yes, uh, we have uh, most of uh, us are, the, are free only in the afternoon because all the colleges have reopened. So we have thought of uh, conducting it uh, between three to four. And uh, thank you so much for the nice words, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so it's... Uh, I think it's already getting late and one uh, uh, one more uh, GN sir, I think only one person was there, we have a feedback, the last one, I think that can be the last one, I think, because yes, we are sir. making Sar also to wait for a long time, so he's also the best for the, so but being a Sunday, I, so even though it's a Sunday, I think uh, most of the participants are very anxious and eager to say, tell their comments and their suggestions. So that's a very good sign, I think. So that is taken in a very positive note. And uh, I think we'll have one more last feedback to yes. finalize our, wind up our uh, program. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you can go ahead. Indra Priyadrishni, ma'am. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ma'am, thank you for the organizers for conducting such a uh, hot uh, topic. I have attended uh, the, for the past last six days uh, and also have interaction with the resource person, starting from aquatic insects and the exopodents and the ex, uh, butterflies and the finally honeybees. All the sessions are very much interesting and also informative sessions for both the students and, and as well as the staffs. Uh, I am from Kadalu. Uh, then one more thing. Uh, that the Guru Subramanian sir from Mizoram University have given a lot of motivation and also uh, not only telling the subjects regarding the metagenomics and also about that uh, how that uh, interaction for the st students getting that uh, project uh, from SVRB and uh, UGC project, a uh, lot of information is very wonderful and uh, informative sessions to both the staffs and students. Thank you organizers and uh, both the, all the management Staffs and HOD and uh, those who course uh, coordinator. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, we have a request from the participants that we keep the WhatsApp group active. Sure, uh, we'll be keeping the WhatsApp group active so that uh, we can put in uh, our messages. And also, we'd like to you to subscribe to our uh, official YouTube channel, VivoCC Watch, so that you can keep... Uh, uh, keep you updated on whatever happenings at Vivo Chidambaram College, not only in the, our subject, in other subjects also, and also for our uh, NAC, because uh, we are uh, accredited with the NAC uh, three cycles and we are uh, uh, doing the uh, scheme of Paramash where we are mentoring other colleges. We have many institutions also under us. And so you can uh, please subscribe to our Vivo CC Watch so that you can keep yourself updated on all happenings around at Vivo Chitambaram College campus. And sure, we'll be keeping you updated in the WhatsApp group, which we have formed. And uh, thank you so much, participants, for, uh, especially uh, a special thanks to our overseas participants from China, from Hong Kong. Uh, so you have Kumar Ganesan and uh, uh, you have uh, uh, Prabhu Kumar uh, Sita Raman. Uh, all from uh, China, Hong Kong, and Ethiopia also we have participants. And all our participants from India and from Tamil Nadu especially. We have a lot of participants from Tamil Nadu. So thank you so much for all the faculty and all the research scholars who have come and enjoyed uh, the seven, sixth day, which we made it into a seventh day for all your, your uh, benefits also. And so thanks uh, uh, to all the participants, to all the resource persons also I'd like to thank. And uh, very special thanks to our resource person of today. So very, very, very short time we have got, uh, and it was a uh, great uh, having talking with you, sir, and uh, sharing your knowledge, especially on beekeeping, which is very much useful. So as someone told that uh, it's, uh, uh, this topic, uh, what we chose was uh, very much uh, uh, was forgotten. 
So I actually, it's not outdated, it's actually forgotten. And you have many, uh, empty number of avenues for research also, for research scholars, as well as for uh, faculty, which uh, where we can apply and get projects. So this is a very wide, vast area, which has not been knocked into by many people. So this uh, FTP on entomology uh, should have been a, a very informative and brainstorming sessions, which we had. Uh, thank you, the participants, and for the uh, final vote of thanks by the organizer, I give it over to Geeta. Thank you, believe that the reward of a thing well done is having done it. However, we would be falling short of a duty if we do not recognize a thing well done and encourage it. May I now request Dr. B. Gita, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, to render the word of thanks. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty for sharing abundant blessing on through the seven days FTP, recent studies and entomology. I thank our Honorable Secretary and the Principal, uh, Dr. C. Veerabhagu, for providing platform for successful completion of this program. I would like to thank our uh, beloved HOD, Dr. Radhika. Uh, without her support and encouragement, this FTP would not have been possible. I thank all the uh, eminent uh, resource person right from day one, FDP one to today's resource person, Dr. Srinivasan, Associate Professor, uh, Professor uh, Agricultural University, Coimbatore. Sir, really, your talk was very wonderful for uh, regarding the crop productivity, rural livelihood, and the nutritional security. So, I'm very informative, sir, your talk. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I thank my colleagues, and also I thank uh, all the faculty members from other colleges, universities, research scholars, and abroad. I would like to thank Dr. Gomathin Ayer, Head, Department of High Computer Science. Without his support, uh, this FTP program would not have, have uh, successful through this online virtual mode. I thank all the participants without, uh, without I, I would like to thank all the participants. Without you, this program would not uh, happen in a greater height. Thank you all. Last not but last lead, this I thank Naranjani for um, absolutely fantastic uh, master of ceremony job you did. I wish you all success in future. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And thank you all the participants. Uh, hope to meet you again in another FTP program, uh, surely to be organized soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Very thank much. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you dear, so, kind request to the participants. So, uh, kindly submit your feedback forms. And uh, please wait for your certificates to be uh, sent to you by your mails within one week's time. So, please. Okay, ma'am, I'm leaving. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.